In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create your own Wordle app. Let's create a new React project using the Create React app by typing npx create-react-app Wordle. This will take a couple of minutes depending on your computer. Once finished, let's open the project in VS Code and start the dev server by running npm run start. This will open a new web browser tab with the project and you should see a spinning React icon. Now delete the HTML content in the app component and let's delete app.css and app.test.js since we won't need them for this tutorial. The first component that we are going to create is the keyboard. The keyboard component consists of smaller components called keyboard keys. Pause the video if you want to try creating it yourself or follow along with me. Create a folder named keyboard, which will store all of our code related to the keyboard. Create a keyboard key.jsx file and return a simple button to start. Back in the app.js file, add the keyboard key component so that we can visually see what we are working with. Now assign the keyboard key class, which we will use to style the key. We will also create a keyboard.css file and import it into the keyboard.jsx file. In the keyboard.css file, define the new keyboard key class and apply the styler to make the button look good. Pass the children property to the button component. This will allow us to customize the characters of each key. We will pass the A character in the app.js component. Now, let's define a state property on the keyboard key and assign it to a data attribute named data state that we can use to control the color of the key using CSS. Let's define four different states for the keyboard as constants. In the keyboard.css, implement the data attribute selectors for the four states that the keyboard can be in. Now, changing the state of the component will also change the color. To create the keyboard component, first create a new file named keyboard.jsx. Define an array of letters for each row of the keyboard as constant variables. Create a new component that will return a list of keyboard keys using one of the letter arrays as input. Finally, create the keyboard component with three keyboard rows for each row of letters. Don't forget to import the keyboard key component if you want to avoid compile errors, unlike me. Back in the app.js file, replace the keyboard key with the keyboard component, and you should see nothing. That is because we forgot to import the keyboard.css file in the keyboard.jsx file. Let's quickly fix the styling of the keyboard by implementing the keyboard CSS classes. Also, let's fix the bug with the letters not showing up by passing the letter as a child. Now create the enter key component using the keyboard key as the child and add the enter key to the keyboard. Since the enter key is bigger compared to other keys, we will add a size property to the keyboard key and set it to a data size attribute. In the keyboard.css file, implement the new selectors for the keyboard size and then update the enter key component to use the large size property. Before creating the backspace key, we will install a React icons library so that we can have a custom icon for the backspace key. Create the backspace key component using a BS backspace React icons component as the child, and add the backspace key component to the rest of the keyboard. With the keyboard UX complete, we are going to give it some state to keep track of the individual keyboard key state. For that, we will use recoil.js, a state management library. Install recoil.js by running npm install recoil dash dash save. Add the recoil root component as the root component of the app component. Create a new state.js file and a new atom named keyboard state, which will hold the state of all the keyboard key states. An atom is a piece of state that we can share and use throughout our application. Next, create a new file named hooks.js and implement the use letter state, which returns the state of the current letter. Back in the keyboard key file, we'll create a new letter key component that will use the letter state and pass it into the keyboard key component. Let's also update the letter key set component to use the new letter key component instead of the keyboard key. Now, if you assign a state to one of the letters, you should see the color of the letters change. 
Back in the hooks file, we will create a use on letter selected hook with dummy logic to print the clicked letter until we can implement the correct logic. Now use on letter selected hook in the letter key component and pass the function as an on click to the keyboard key. If you try clicking on the keys, nothing would happen since we need to pass in the on click to the button component. Use the spread operator to pass the additional properties to the button component in the keyboard key. Create two separate hook functions for both the enter key and the backspace key that we will also implement later. Don't forget to add the onClick functions to the enter key and backspace key components. With the keyboard done, we can move on to creating the Wordle grid. Create a new folder named tile row and a new file named tile.jsx. The tile component will take a letter property and a state property similar to the keyboard key but won't have any onClick events. Add the tile component to the app component so that we can see what the component looks like when we are making changes to it. Back in the tile file, import tile.css file and create it. In the tile.css file, implement the tile selector class, including the state properties with the different background colors. We can verify the state property is working correctly by changing the default state. In a new tilerow.jsx file, create a tilerow component that will render a list of tiles. You may have noticed that I kept tiles data as a separate variable. This is so that it will be easier to retrieve the tile data from the state later. Back in the app component, replace the tile component with a new tile row component. In the tile row component, populate the tiles data array with some sample state data. We will change this later. Create a new hooks.js file and create a new use tile data hook that will return the tile data instead. It will also take in a row index that we will use to decide which row of the Wordle grid the tile data belongs to later on. Replace the tile data with the data returned by the use tile data in the tile row. Everything should continue to work as previously did, unless you're like me and forgot to export the use tile data hook. Moving on to the state of the tile row, create a new state.js file and create a new tile row atom family. The difference between an atom and an atom family is that an atom is a piece of state, whereas an atom family can create new pieces of state. This allows each tile row essentially to have their own atom, aka their own piece of state. Back in the use tile data hook, we will update the logic to use the state returned by the tiles row family and hard code the size of the tile data to 5. This will retrieve an existing element from the tile row or create a new one if there isn't enough elements in the array. Let's create a new atom named current tile row index atom, which will keep track of the current guest that the player is currently on. Back in the tile row hooks file, create a new hook to add a new letter to the current tile row. I changed the name of the US hook here to avoid the name conflict with the hook in the keyboard hooks file. Jump to the keyboard hooks file and use the add letter to the current tile row hook instead of the dummy logic that we previously created. Clicking the letters on the keyboard should now add the letter to the tile row. Back in the tile row hooks file, add a new hook that will remove letters from the current tile row. Replace the logic in the use on backspace clicked hook in the keyboard hooks file with the new remove letter hook. It's important that your hook functions always start with the word use, otherwise you will have an error when trying to use it as a hook in the React components. Verify that you can now add and remove letter to the tile row. With the tile row complete, we can start working on the game grid. Create a new folder named Wordle and a new file named gameboard.jsx and a wordle.css file. Now create a gameboard component that will return a list of tile row components from a list of tile row IDs. Back in the app.js, let's replace the tile row with a new gameboard component. Unfortunately, I made a mistake and assigned the ID to a non-existent property, so let's fix that real quick. 
Import the world.css file and let's implement the gameboard selector class to center the gameboard. Now create a new file and a component named Wordle that will have the title of the gameboard and our keyboard. Back in the app component, we'll replace everything except for the recoil read component with our Wordle component. Since the default styling for the h1 tag is too big, open the index.css file and modify the default styling to something a little smaller. Now we are ready to move on to the state. Create a new file named state.js and create a new atom named max tries that will control the number of attempts the player has to guess the word. Create a hook.js file and let's implement the use tile row IDs that will return a list of tile IDs that we can reuse in our game board component. In the game board component, replace the tile row IDs array with the return value of your tile row IDs hook. Changing the default value of the max try atom will now change how many tries you have to guess the word. Let's create a new atom named selected word atom, which will store the word that the player is trying to guess. In the hooks file, we will implement a use word length hook and return the size of the word that we are guessing. Then, back in the tile row hooks file, we will replace the hard coded size variable with the return value of our use word length hooks. I also noticed some duplication between the hooks in the tile row, so I created a new use current tile row hook to clean up some of the duplicate logic and make it more dry. Jumping back to the Wordle hooks file, we will start implementing the onSubmit guess hook that will get invoked when the player presses enter, by first incrementing the current guess attempt that the player is on. Back in the keyboard hooks.js, replace the logic in the use on enter click to call our use on submit guess hook. Now, if we type a word and click enter, we should be able to continue to type additional word on the next tile row. In the wordle hooks.js, let's update the on submit guess to check if the current guess matches the expected word and update the tiles in the current tile row with the correct state. With the tile row showing the correct state, the only thing that is left to add is for the keyboard to update the state of each keys. In the keyboard hooks.js file, create a new hook named use update keyboard state that will return a function that updates the keyboard state using a list of letters and their new state. We can now use this new hook in the use on submit guess hook to update the keyboard after the tile row state has been set. Now, typing in your guess and clicking enter will also update the state of the keyboard. Let's add one more hook named use pick random word to select the random word when the page loads to make the game more challenging. Update the Wordle component to call the use pick random word so that a random word is selected when the Wordle component is first loaded. Lastly, back in the keyboard state, let's remove the default letters to avoid any confusion. Now, if we try our game, we should see that everything should now be working. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, then leave a comment below. Otherwise, don't forget to hit that like button and I will see you in the next one.